Well, pet owners know that there's nothing worse than putting down a four-legged friend. Yeah, but despite a recent increase in no-kill animal shelters, millions of pets are still being euthanized every year. It has many asking, does no-kill really mean no-kill? Tonight, Sayed Shabir shows us what he uncovered. Mark Krista, the no-kill initiative has taken off over the last five years with now more than 1,200 no-kill shelters across the country, including dozens right here in Kansas City. They're saving thousands of lives, but no-kill doesn't mean every animal lives. The sound of Jack's heart monitor fills the surgery room at HSPCA. It's a sound of life, one that will be silenced for nearly 10,000 animals this year in Kansas City alone. That statistic may seem discouraging, but it actually shows progress. Three years ago, the number of animals euthanized in Kansas City was three times higher. But thanks to a relatively new concept called no kill, dogs like Tank and Meatball get a second chance. No kill came to Casey in 1994, introduced by the Humane Society of Greater Kansas City. You would think no kill means every animal lives, but that's not the case. The term no kill doesn't mean that no animal ever dies. Even at no kill shelters, cats and dogs are being put down because of vicious behavior, sickness, or injury. But those numbers are dwindling. At HSPCA in Merriam, CEO Courtney Thomas says only 4% of the more than 18,000 animals it serves each year are euthanized. For us, it's really all about the quality of life for the pet. We don't want, it's not about the numbers, it's about what's in the best interest of, of each individual animal that we serve. That no-kill philosophy is no different at Wayside Waves. We do everything we can to make sure that they can be adopted. But that wasn't the case five years ago, says Wayside Waves president Cynthia Smith. The shelter was an open admission shelter, and no kill was far from reality. Anybody could come up and surrender their dog, and we would take them. And we don't have space to take every animal that was, that was brought to us. So at that time, we would have to euthanize for space. But now the shelter is no kill, and its euthanasia numbers have changed drastically. We have a live release rate of 94%, which means we never euthanize for space, ever. Working with our partners at the Scripps Howard News service, we analyzed the no-kill movement across the country. Although growing, no-kill has only been adopted by less than 17% of shelters nationwide. That's why the country maintains a kill rate of 50%, which means one out of every two dogs or cats living in a shelter will be euthanized, four million every year. The killing isn't done for reasons of mercy. They're killing healthy animals. They're killing sick and injured, but treatable animals. Nathan Winograd wrote a book on what he hopes becomes a no-kill revolution. He's spearheading the effort on a national level. What we want is for shelters to make the same decisions about quote-unquote euthanasia that you or I might make for one of our own cherished companions. The head of the Humane Society of the United States says no-kill goes beyond the shelters and requires community support. You can have a group that has all the right intentions and even has some decent resources. But if they're not getting the cooperation from the public, they're not going to be able to achieve the community-based outcome of eliminating euthanasia. Bring it here, Bill. Right now, communities in general are not cooperating. While pet owners spend more than $50 billion a year on their animals, only about $1 billion is donated to nonprofit shelters. Of the 20 million households expected to add a new pet this year, less than a third will adopt from their local shelter. And of those who do adopt, one in five will return that animal to the shelter. This is a community-wide project. It can't just be one institution or another. It's got to be everyone working together. But you have to have the people participating. To participate, those looking for a new pet are encouraged to adopt. What's wonderful is that when you adopt from Wayside Waifs or any shelter, you're not just helping that animal, but you're helping another animal because now there's space for us to rescue another one. But to really make no kill possible, experts say pet owners need to have their animals spayed or neutered. We know that there are many people who believe, oh, we want our pet to just have that first litter, or I don't want to neuter my male dog. You're giving them the gift of life by doing so. A gift that allows Jack's heart monitor to continue to beat. 
In the effort to work together towards no kill, if one shelter is running out of room while another has available resources, rescue groups will organize a transfer, even moving some animals hundreds of miles away. Their message to the community, spay and neuter, adopt, don't buy, volunteer if you can, and donate. Sayed Shabir, 41 Action News. All right, because now I know you're interested. The checklist of what to consider when choosing an animal shelter or facility select a pet. Go to our website, KSHB.com, and look under Spotlight. There's also a map locating the no-kill animal shelters we have right here in the Kansas City area.